great example of this is the experiment done by John Cairns in 1988. His team put lactose intolerant cells in an environment with only lactose for food. Under a law of nature, every one of these lactose intolerant cells would have died. But surprisingly, they all survived. Every one of them understood the problem that they were facing and replaced the defective lactase enzyme with a functioning one to utilize lactose for food. If a cell has the ability to decide how and when to evolve because it's facing extinction, then anything can. The existing beliefs are that a human body is a biochemical machine controlled by genes and therefore the behavior, emotions and character of our biology, our health, our lives are controlled by genes which we don't control. So this is what we taught people. You're a victim, genes control your life, you didn't pick them, you can't change them, the genes you end up with program what's going to happen. My experiments on stem cells, which I started in 1967, I'd isolate one stem cell, put it in a petri dish, and then it would divide every 10 hours. So I took all the cells, split them up into three groups, and then just put them in three petri dishes. And then I changed the growth medium, the constituents of the environment, in each of the three dishes. In one dish, the cells form bone. The second dish, they form muscle. In a third dish, they form fat cells. What controlled the fate of a cell? And the first thing you have to say is, well, wait, they were all genetically identical when they were put in a dish. So obviously the genes didn't control it because they all had the same genes. What was different was the environment. And all of a sudden in my career, it said, oh my gosh, here I am teaching genes control life. And the cells are telling me, genes respond to life. And since you can control the response, you can control your life. It's how you read the environment, how your mind perceives the environment. And if you understand this, then you could lead yourself to the most 